Welcome to Rightcast Between the Pages. Our podcast will focus less on the what and more on the how and why of writing a book. Of course, we'll still focus on what our guests write and discuss books, but we'll examine the things that happen behind the scenes, the book of you, the writer. The trials and tribulations, the rejections and the successes. We'll explore deeper and with greater insight, the author's psyche and process and the person beneath the book. Hosted by Stuart and Florian, we'll welcome guests to discuss all of the above, and we hope that the conversations we have will be relatable for all who listen. Welcome to Writecast. Welcome to Writecast with me, Stuart White. And me, Florian Humphrey. This week, we've got a brilliant guest on. Claire is an award-winning pitch book author. Um, She's the author of The Tide, which won the North Somerset Teachers Book Award in 2019, um, and the Scooby Crystal Kite Award in 2020, and an honour award for illustration at the Children's Book Awards, Ireland. The Perfect Shelter was shortlisted for the Insta Book Grammys 2020 and has been reviewed by The Guardian, identified as a book to support children through the coronavirus pandemic. She's also a right mentor, picture book writer in residence for our hub and leads our very popular picture book online course, which I'm sure many of you are on the waiting list for. And Claire is represented by Alice Williams of Alice Williams Literary. So it's lovely to have you on, Claire. It's really Hi, exciting. Claire. Nice to see you. Hi, everybody. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me on. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get really um, stuck into um, you as a writer tonight and, and learn about the ins and outs, the processes, the inner thinking behind, well, your incredible productivity as a picture book writer. Um, I'm going to start, though, where um, we always like to start um, with, with authors, and that is with your origin story. So where, when, why did you start writing picture books? Well, I started writing picture books really as a New Year's resolution, but it's something that my friend and I have done since 2013. Um, And we've always written a list of things that we want to do that year. So rather than a resolution of things you're going to fail at, we wanted to try lots of different things, almost like a bucket list. Um, So we had down one year that I was going to try and write a children's story. And that's really where it started. Just a pipe dream. I guess I'd always been interested in stories and as my teaching background I used to read lots of picture books bringing them to life in role play um and at the same time I had young children so it was it was on my radar but I think it was yeah it really was a January sort of push really to give it a go um I joined the SCBWI Scooby um and a critique group who kind of taught me everything I needed to know because quite quickly I realized that the story that I'd written that I thought was amazing um really wasn't what I thought it was and I've in my picture book course I often share the um well, one of the first stories I've ever written just so you can see where I'd come from uh this first story I sent out on submission way too soon I think I may have got a couple of rejections but mostly just radio silence it wasn't spreads poor rhyme all the things that you know probably lots of people listening to this have made and can relate to so that was it really, but I think it it was more than just a random thing I wanted to try. I mean, I'd done things like mosaic and the dry ski slope and kayaking and those things kind of came and went. But writing, I think, played to my strengths because I, you know, I do like words. Um, I do love being creative. But also I think because of what I was doing at my job, uh, working with children and bringing stories alive and making meaningful learning and a sort of context for learning from them. I think it just all came together at the right time. And I had young children. I wanted them to love books. I wanted them to be proud of me. And I think it, yeah, I mean, it it really was a pie in the sky kind of idea, but it just seemed to align at the right time for me. That's amazing. I think it's good for everyone that you, yeah, stuck to the the writing and maybe not the kayaking and stuff like that I think you've made <laughs> I <laughs> definitely made a bench though I mean it was lovely like all really detailed and I spent a long time sourcing out the right kind of it to China but yeah not not everything stuck like writing did and I don't if 
funny because I've never really had thought of myself as wanting to write a book before. So I really, I just feel so lucky that I came about, you know, came about writing, came across it. And just now I can't imagine life without it. So yeah, I feel lucky. Claire, could I just ask, um, the original writing group that you, you joined near the start of your writing career, um, is that still the same people that you're with now or have you moved on to a different group and do they continue to support you? No, it's a real shame the group folded. Um, oh. I am still in contact with several of them and one of the one of the writers in particular who was new when I joined, so knew exactly how I'd felt sort of quickly um, realising that you know, your manuscript is not the, the gold you thought it was. We really are close friends. So, yeah, I mean, and... And since joining other critique groups, I've got a whole a whole load of, of people around me that I feel, you know, have supported me, but also know exactly what it's like. And I know that's just that's that's the gold right there. Um, I said after that was an online group that I first joined because I was too scared to to actually admit that I wanted to call myself a writer and go to a face to face group. So it felt much safer to have an online critique group. Now I am part of an Exeter group and we do meet face to face. And yeah, it's just. It is like meeting up with friends, really. That sounds so nice. Oh, well, cause you meant, it sounds like critique groups are quite an important part of your writing process. And I suppose there's a lot of, as you said, people listening who will also be part of critique groups and, and supportive communities. But seeing as that's a big part of your writing, do you want to, you know, take us through a little bit about, you know, how you write? And obviously you've got your critique group who you probably share your work with um but you know Writecast is all about finding out more about the processes so yeah do you want to share with our listeners of how you write and you know you're a plotter or a pantser are you early morning late at night or yeah anything that you think might be useful for fellow writers yeah well critique groups I mean if you haven't got a critique group I'd so definitely recommend getting one not just for the support that you can get in terms of you know if you get a rejection and it stings and you want someone who understands not just that but also for me, it's about having the deadline. So I think I'm I think I'm a part of two picture book critique groups. So I know that every month I'm gonna submit two picture books. And that's that's sort of you know, you talk about being productive, that's a huge part of it. I hate missing the deadline. I don't think I've ever missed one. <laughs> you know, even if I'm just gonna put in a pitch or a really rough draft or something, you know, that has been resurrected from my, you know, from my drive. I um I know that I'm always going to sort of be working on at least two picture books at a time and the deadlines really help me. I'm I'm definitely a person who, you know, it, it might be two or three days until, you know, the moment we're about to press send. And if I haven't done something, that will be the moment that motivates me. So yeah, I think critique groups are brilliant. And then of course you have the invaluable advice that you get from um from people. Um how do I write? I I think I'm quite a varied writer. I think I'm quite flexible. I don't know if I have a sort of a set sort of process. I think it depends on what I'm writing, if there's a deadline, what kind of book it is, does it need research? Is it something that I'm writing for myself or is it something that someone else is sort of, you know, to a brief that someone's asked me to write? But on the whole, I would say that I, um, I'm more of a planner now than I was, so definitely more of a plotter. When I first started writing, definite, absolute pantser, no idea what I was doing. And in fact, when I wrote Aerodynamics of Biscuits, I think you can probably tell, I literally was going from page to page thinking, what can happen next? What can happen next? Because then the mice appear and then they're in the garden and then there's a pirate. Then they go to the moon and then there's cheese. And um, I kind of just found my way with that and got really lucky. And then I found it quite difficult actually to get my second book because I don't think I really understood what I was doing and the process of what I had done. Now, um, especially on the right mentor course, I talk a lot about plotting um, and um, not pantsing because I think it's quite difficult to edit afterwards if you haven't got a clear thread for your story. But I don't, I'm not somebody that would sit down and plan the whole entire picture book before I start. I'm not that much of a detailed plotter. I count my pitch line as my plot. You know, it's a very sort of short, wrap up of what the story is going to entail so I don't start a story now unless I have one line about what's going to happen and the sort of takeaway message I don't always know how the character is going to you know overcome and, and learn the message that I've written but I have a really clear idea of, of basically what they're going to learn 
Um, so wh what they're going to start with at the beginning and ultimately how it's going to end. The, the bits in the middle are a bit more wishy-washy and I like to leave space for a bit of spontaneity. Um, and that's where I think the sort of magic happens. And then I just think, what could happen now? What could happen now? But I do have a clear internal arc, usually, for my character. And my pitch line does change. So sometimes I get to the end of a first draft and think, actually, what I'd written has evolved. And that's fine. So I'll you know, scrap it, change it, write it again. But it does just help me have a little bit of focus um, because there are so many ways that plots can go. Um, and I just like to have something to ground me. Uh, I think the non-fiction picture books that I've been writing, which are they're fictional, but they have a um, sort of facts interwoven and a non-fiction element. They're quite helpful, actually, if you're not a plotter, because there's there's less options you can go. So, you know, if I'd had a story about Lenny the lemur on holiday and that was all I had, there could be so many options of what could have happened. But because I sort of knew that this was going to be a non-fiction story about smells, my plot was sort of a little bit planned out for me. And I, I think I liked that grounding. Brilliant. That's really, it's really interesting to to find out um, how people go about about the writing the, the various processes. Um, one question that I, I I think is really important for me, and um, I'm always interested to find out more about, is what motivates people to write. So, what is it that um, makes you get up in the morning and sit down at your desk and spend a couple of hours or however long it is each day on on your writing as a as a, a, a desire to improve as a um i guess contracts and you know being given commissions and so on or um as a more pure creative reasons um something which is is internal and, and and you have to do i think it's all a mixture of those and that's not a very helpful answer <laughs> what you want to know but i think it's um you know I, I want to feel proud of myself and i want to achieve something and definitely when i started um, you know, what I would, cons would have considered success was a publishing deal and that was what I was focused on and, you know, the more the better, that's definitely how I started out. Um, but I think it was more than that. I mean, I wanted my children to love reading. I wanted them to be proud of me. I, I'm, I think because of my teaching background, I consider myself a reasonably caring and sort of helpful person. I feel that's a really rewarding part of, you know, being a mentor, especially. I like helping and giving back. So the stories that I write, I always hope people take away something. You know, obviously I write the sort of more serious books like The Perfect Shelter and The Tide, which I hope will sort of bring a little bit of hope and, and yeah, just when you're going through a really hard, challenging time, it's there if you need it and it could open up conversations. So I think that that's also part of it, wanting to help, wanting to make a difference, wanting my family to be proud of me, wanting to be proud of myself. But I do think my sort of parameters of success have evolved. Um, somebody asked me a similar question recently, and I think actually I've come to realise it's not all about the final deal. I can say that now because I have publishing deals, of course, you know, until you get there, then that is you know, that's the ultimate. But actually what I've, what I've created around me and, and every day that I get to live writing books that people enjoy, interacting with people like you, the writing community, helping other writers, that all feels so rewarding and so lovely and I hope it continues you know for much longer I'm going to enjoy every minute of it whilst it lasts that is just being part of the whole world feels motivating I suppose yeah I just I just love it yeah and it's definitely I think it is really I think that's something that a lot of writers learn when you start off feeling quite isolated and then you start to learn there's this like wider writing community and I think yeah that's something I think a lot of listeners probably Sympathy. I mean, I certainly, I just, now that we're part of, well, now that I'm part of Right Mentor and I've met all, all these lovely people, um, it definitely energizes you, doesn't it, to meet sort of fellow writers and uh, on different publishing journeys as well, I think. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you mentioned, obviously, you mentioned all these, you know, these writers that you meet and also the ones that you teach. Um, and, you know, we know you obviously, as well as being an author, but as our prolific um picture book course leader <laughs> um and we absolutely love your course and it's incredible um and obviously you get to meet all these all these writers at different stages of their publishing journey and, and you help develop their craft and help them grow as writers um so obviously you're giving a lot 
to them um but obviously these courses is a two-way relationship isn't it and I, I I suppose they're also um you know making an impact on you and your craft so I, I just would be interested to hear whether you think that teaching through right mentor and other in other uh, courses um has helped shape your writing um as well as you helping to shape other people's writing yeah I think definitely when I sort of sat down and planned out what I wanted to include in the program I had to think really carefully about what I have found useful and what I do find useful, how I work, um, so that I could sort of impart what I'd know and what I wish I'd known to other people. And I found that reflection, more, I wasn't expecting necessarily, but I found the reflection on my processes really helpful. Because, and then we focus a lot on that on the picture book course, because I think if you're aware of what you're doing well, you can replicate it and do it again. Um, but if you know you have a weakness, so if, if I know that I, you know, I'm being told often by my lovely agent Alice that often my stories don't have enough narrative um, or, you know, a bit slight in narrative, I know that's sort of an area that I need to work on. I'm more likely to be able to add narrative in my stories because I'm aware of it. So really thinking analytically about how I work, how I write has helped me improve um, you know, I know what I'm doing well and what people like, but equally what I find trickier, I'm just I'm just aware of it more. And um, I spot it in other people's work and think, ah, oh, that's how they do it. And then, you know, you can sort of magpie ideas. Um, and that's a really big part of the picture book course, because I can't tell anybody else how to write a picture book. They're an absolute minefield. You know, if, if you thought if you thought about it too much before sitting down to write one, you'd never do it because they're so complicated, so difficult to distill that idea into so few words. But I think what we do pride ourselves on in the picture book course is sort of helping you find your own process um, and just being aware of what works for you and what doesn't. And some things in the picture book course you might never do again, but you've given it a go and it just might help you fine tune how you do like to work. And, and I found that really valuable and I think other people do as well. Yeah, brilliant. And and I guess it's, it's that reciprocal thing, isn't it? Um, we're all always learning regardless of whichever stage we're at um, and, and whoever's work we're looking at. Um, I just wanted to, to quickly uh, say as well, um, Claire uh, sent a, a signed book um, for my daughter the other day and we have um, read it every night, actually since it arrived. And she absolutely loves it. It's the um, We, It Wasn't Me. Um, that's that's your most recent one, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> um, and we, we have really loved it. Um, I think it's it really taps into children of that age and their, their sense of humour in terms of, of we and, and pee and, and poop and the, the kind of things <laughs> that they, they all find hilarious. Um, so, yeah, and, and every time we get to the bit um, about the caribou when he licks the wee... Um, <laughs> Our face is our face is priceless. I need to I'll need to get a photograph <laughs> and, and send it to you. It's, it's brilliant. But um oh. yeah, so that that's Claire's latest book, um, which you had the launch for. I believe that was your first online launch um yeah. the other night. That's right. Yeah, I had done sort of different kinds of launches, sometimes like you know, in a library or in a bookshop. And we we did one in a pub once, which was also good. So lots of different kinds of things. Um, but I'd never done an online one. I hadn't I wasn't really sure what it would be like, felt quite nervous about it when people would turn up, but it was such a nice celebration and it helped having, um, I mean, we did it with Stories by the Sea, there's a, there's a bookshop owner there called Heather, who also was a teacher and, you know, is a, is a book, picture book lover, it helped having her to sort of bounce ideas off. In fact, I don't think I've ever done a launch on my own, I usually do it with somebody else for that same reason, I just sort of it's a scary thing, isn't it? Putting yourself out there and, and also feeling like you're celebrating yourself, whereas it's quite often easier for someone else to do that or be so I one with Fiona Barker once and I was sort of, you know, celebrating her book and she was doing mine. That feels a lot easier than sort of feeling like you're, you know, being big headed and talking about your own book. But I'm really glad that your daughter enjoyed We. Yeah, no, she, <laughs> she absolutely adores it. So thanks. Thanks for sending that. Um, hopefully when she's older, um, it will be worth something when you're a, a famous <laughs> um, best-selling author at that time. <laughs> okay, I think uh, we're at this stage of the show where we're going to do our Beat the Host quiz. Um, now, before we Excited. came on air, 
Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, before we came on air, uh, Claire um, nominated to take me <laughs> on in the quiz, um, which was a good totally choice, I think. predicted that. <laughs> I was like, Stuart is going to be thrown under the bus for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I mean, I said before, I love quizzes, but I'm usually the one that organises them. I'm not usually one that sits and takes part. So I don't know if I'm going to be any good at this at all. No, so don't Florian worry. It's only, is it's going to be the quiz master, I think. <laughs> yes, I'm going to be the quiz master. Yes. It's only five questions. So it's five, five questions of pain and then it's over. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready, Stuart and Claire, for the first question? Yeah. These are all to do absolutely. with picture books not picture books I should correct myself all two oh, children's books in the theme of right mental so um so the first one just as just as well because Claire would have wiped the floor with me <laughs> if it was picture books yeah yeah they're all about Claire's picture books <laughs> five questions on that. um okay so number one so what is the Gruffalo scared of so I'll give you a couple of seconds to think of your answer what is the Gruffalo scared of Okay, shall we start with Claire, seeing as she's our guest, and that's the polite thing to do. What's your answer, Claire? <laughs> I'm going to say that the Gruffalo is scared of the mouse. And Stuart? Yeah, I, I don't know, so I think Claire might be winning this one. Claire gets a point. I have to do my poker face because she said the right answer and I was like, try not to <laughs> smile and give it away. So, <laughs> um, Yes, it's the mouse. Well done, Claire. The Gruffalo is scared of the mouse. Stuart. Oh, dear. Anyway, next one. To be honest, you wiped the floor <laughs> when they did the quiz last time with uh, the topical pursuit pair. <laughs> that was terrible. Um, so where is, so the second question, where is Paddington Bear from? a couple of seconds on that where is paddington bear from know this one i know this one stuart's scratching his head like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay stuart you get to start yeah i, I should know this but I, i'm i'm blank hazard a guess anywhere <laughs> does he not have a label on him <laughs> On his, yeah. on his or something in his suitcase that tells him where he's from, but I can't, I can't remember. Okay, we'll pass, Claire. That's a good detail, Stuart, but that wasn't the question. The question is the answer. The question is Peru. I think. Yeah, it's Peru. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> See, I thought it's just such a cool place for him to come from. I was like, so random, but brilliant. Um, next question. Okay, we're moving away from younger children to older children. Uh, what mode of transport does Lee Scoresby use in the fantasy book The Northern Lights by Philip Pullman? So I picked this one because it's my favourite book. Um, a couple of seconds on that one to think. And Claire? What is his mode I'm of gonna transport? Hot air balloon. And Stuart? Yeah, it's a hot air balloon. It is. Yay! <laughs> I would say you're drawing, but Claire's currently ahead. But you got you both yeah. got the point on that on that question. Um, the next one in the Cat in the Hat. What type of pet does Sally have? <laughs> I can't remember who I asked first. Stuart. A cat. Claire. Goldfish. Yeah, it's a, well, I've just got fish, but I don't know what type of fish it is, but Claire still gets the point for that. That's good. Yeah, it's a fish. He has a pet fish. And yeah. finally, in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, what is Edmund's favourite sweet offered to him by the White Witch? Stuart? It's Turkish Delight. Claire, do you agree or disagree with Stuart? I agree, Turkish Delight. It is Turkish Delight. Yay. Perfect. <laughs> but I think we have a clear winner on that on that yep. quiz, unfortunately. <laughs> so well done to our <laughs> guest, Claire. <laughs> Yay. Worthy winner. You did. <laughs> Absolutely wiped the floor there, I think. You did. You did very well. I mean, the first two are sort of picture booky related ones, um, but you still did amazingly well. So yay. Yeah, you're gonna have... <laughs> then the, the score would have been completely different. <laughs> 
Well, I've written, I've written you down as our winner for, for our very first guest episode. So that's quite exciting. <laughs> yeah, well done, Claire. Well done. <laughs> Thank well you. Done. Um, so that wraps up the episode with Claire Helen Welsh, the award winning uh, writer in residence, picture book author. And thanks very much for, for joining us tonight, Claire. Oh, it's a yeah, pleasure. So I had a lovely time. Thank you for inviting me.